Hello everyone, my name is Vox. Good news is that Army Crate has updated on the Asus ROG Ally, specifically on my review unit yesterday, I got the update and I was playing with it all day yesterday to see if I can trip it up and see if I can have any of the particular problems that I had noted in my review. And thankfully, I'm pleased to report that it seems largely everything is fixed that I had a big problem with. So uh, this is a really good news, specifically because when I did my review video, I had the understanding that it had to be fixed by the time this launches, right? It can't get into people's hands in the state that it was at. So I was banking on this, and I even said this in my review video, saying like, you know, software, software, and that can get fixed. So I'm happy and pleased to report that uh, I didn't have to go in that particular angle, just show it off in the review video. But now everyone should really have a better idea of where Armory Crate is right now, because it's in a much, much better state. And overall answers a lot of questions on how a handheld should run on a Windows platform and helps Windows navigate that in a way that is overall better. The front end management that they have on Armor Crate, this is also prior as well, but how that's been fixed, they also kind of m change that up a little bit in how that content is presented and it's better in a better way. I'm going to show that to you in the video, but even small little things like Windows notifications actually appear as a little bell inside of Armory Crate's dashboard. Uh, how the quick access menu opens up little changes that they added with having the sound menu in there. The one feature that I would ask of Asus is if they could potentially have a way in the quick access menu of Armory Crate, if you could force quit a game through that application. That is something that I really wish would be there. Uh, that's the only thing that I would wish for right now outside of something like an auto TDP like function. I am going to be covering auto TDP stuff soon. Uh, that'll probably be for next week. The next video I have for the uh, uh, ROG Ally is the SSD upgrade. But right now I'm going to show you some stuff that is in Armory Crate that is there, but I'm happy to report that it is largely fixed. All right, so here we are taking a look at the latest Armory Crate. And by and large, this should look very similar to a lot of people that have already seen different reviews for it. The main difference here is that they have switched up a few different things, and there are a lot of little features that we're going to touch base on. The game platforms and how this is centered is in a different, better place, in my opinion, and showing all the different launchers that are currently installed and what's there. The one thing that I didn't mention in my review that actually does deserve some uh, recognition is how the front end actually operates how you would imagine it should. And this worked even prior to... Armor Crate not being fixed, so I should have mentioned that in my review, but I want to touch base on it right now, is that running Game Pass games in a front end, especially if you were trying to do it through Steam's big picture mode, you need to use other types of utilities like UWP Hook for some Game Pass games to actually be uh, mounted into uh, Steam itself, insofar as add a non-Steam game. So having it just work is such a a big thing for me. The one thing that I wish that they that Armory Crate Asus would add is that in the quick access menu, if we take a look at what we can add over here, if there was a possibility to have like a, a an end task, if it could detect the game that was running and we could force quit the game, uh, that is one button that I would love if Asus could add, if we could just have that so that I could quickly close a game. Uh, that is one feature that I would love to see in Armory Crate myself. But more to the point, there's lots of little features. So like if we bring up the quick access menu, this is a, a big trouble spot for me that I didn't like. You can see that I'm using the mouse right now, and right now it's in auto. Now, if I force gamepad mode, then this is going to make the controller into a 360 controller only. This actually had issues, and especially if the system was bogged down, it would take even longer to switch into that. But watch, when I press this, boom, right into desktop mode, and we move the mouse around. The other thing to note is that when we're in the, the, the dashboard or the quick access menu, the mouse will always work. So even if I go over here and I change to gamepad mode, the mouse will still work. And this wasn't operating as it was before. So this is actually really cool to see. Uh, there is a, a, a nice delineation of what is the control that is always dominant. So as long as you have the quick access menu up, that will that mouse will always show up even if it's in gamepad mode so that's a really cool thing the other thing over here is that you now have a sound control directly in the quick access menu before this was all one big brightness menu the other thing that we have that's pretty neat to see if we go into operating mode there are now ways to change the gpu's uma reserve and right now i have this set to three gigabyte and that's something that i would generally recommend as a general rule it defaults to four gig uh you can go up to eight gig and i set it to eight gig uh, it's really not recommended because you are restricting the system's RAM to basically 8 gigabyte. You're going to be swapping like crazy. Things are going to slow down. You're going to be tossing things uh, to swap and back. Uh, so a lot of things are going to slow down. Ultimately, I recommend 3, uh, three gigabyte UMA 
for the system, which has 16 gigs of RAM. So you're basically reserving three, ga- uh, three gigs, which means that overall you have 13 gigs of RAM available for the system. You can set this to auto. Auto basically means that AMD's Radeon control panel is going to be controlling it, which means you'll go to 512 or two gigabytes. Now, again, this is just a UMA size. So this is a reserve, right? You're not doing anything. If a game requires more than three gigabytes, it will go up to there. The reason why I like three gigabytes is that we still have a reserve for the system so that the system has enough RAM and things go relatively smooth. But that's overall one of the things that I really enjoy. Another thing that I have to mention here is if we go into the configuration for gamepad mode and something that I didn't touch base on, which I honestly didn't see. If we go to the trigger, you can actually see that I've set 80%. And what this means is that uh, when I press down 80%, internally this is the new 100 percent. so zero to 100 percent is right here you can tweak this a bit depending on whatever you need obviously having the most fidelity is really great for racing games anything that needs very very granular control over how much pressure you're pressing on the trigger itself so this is something that you can tweak very very specifically both mins and max this is really awesome to see what they're doing there the vibration intensity uh left and right stick the dead zone outer threshold as it is Right now, the the thresholds that were there, actually, I am a big fan of it. So you can control this however you please. Maybe if you start to get stick drift, you're going to need to leverage this to some degree. But how it's set up right now is actually really great for the analog sticks themselves. And then you have your key mapping section, which you will be able to override any particular function that you want. So the right stick click, you can change to something else if you wish. So you have gamepad options. You can do actions, keyboard. So actions being show keyboard or anything else in here that you want. Overall, the whole process has been streamlined quite a bit. Speaking of key mapping specifically, in desktop mode, there is one particular setting here that I would recommend. The default settings for the face buttons, I would change a bit. Enter for A is fine, but B for escape is uh, a bit much, especially if you're playing older PC games. This will just bring up the menu. I would change these to some of the older buttons that PC games typically like, either left shift, left control, uh, Z, X, V, C, those types of buttons on the key, uh, keypad, because that will, you know, be better for the system. And then I would change the analog, st- the analog stick and the D-pad are set for both the arrow keys. I would change the analog stick to WASD, so W-A-S-D, so W-A-S-D. And then for the D-pad, leave it as it is, because this defaults to the cursor D-pads itself. So what you're going to have is a situation where you can play almost any desk, any, any old PC game, and you'll be in a situation where if you go to desktop mode, it's going to work arguably pretty well, especially with having the mouse already functioning. The last bit I want to talk about is the operating mode. Now, in manual mode, they still limit the PL2 and PL4 windows to 15 watt. So... Generally speaking, what you're going to wind up having is that you're going to see situations that even though you can set the main sustain limit to a 7 watt limit, that you'll have a bursting period of a few minutes, a minute and 20, a minute and 30 seconds of these higher TDP values. Now, of course, Ryzen Adjust still works with this. And there are some other things that I still need to talk about, especially some auto TDP apps that will work on this. And that'll be for a future video that I'll cover. Right now, I just want to touch base on Armory Crate being largely fixed. So when you are getting your Asus ROG Ally, you should feel confident knowing that I've been using this for a day now and it's like night and day in terms of how much more stable this has been. So I'm a big fan of this particular update. All right. So that's it for this particular video. Just happy to report that Armory Crate is in a much better position than it was just a few days ago. So when you guys do get your Asus ROG Ally, you should have the confidence knowing that it's going to be a rather solid experience. Uh, Overall, just really pleased to report on this. So that's it from me. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.